First and foremost is James's favorite album, and as was written on the holy tablets, listen to Papa. Wait a sec. James tablets. <laughs> Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko and welcome to Metallic Geek, where we are over analyzing our favorite fucking band. When it comes to pick the best Metallica album, the extended list usually includes the first five, and then it often comes down to just two, Master of Puppets vs. The Black Album. The former was Metallica's creative pinnacle with Cliff, while the latter is their best bestseller. Kill Em All is iconic for pioneering thrash metal, and on Injustice for All Metallica reached their full capacity. But what about Ride the Lightning? Here's what. It is actually the best Metallica record. In a way, Ride the Lightning is underrated, but in many ways it is superior even to Master of Puppets. And today I'll try to prove it. I have three main arguments. Take it easy, get comfy and enjoy the discussion. The first, and to many it may be the, the main reason why Ride the Lightning is the best, is that it has the most contributions by Cliff Burton. It is to a great extent Cliff's album, literally twice as much as Master of Puppets is. Six and three songwriting credits respectively. You might say that Orion is worth it all combined. I cannot disagree, but Metallica and Cliff had gone a long way to create such a masterpiece, and Ride the Lightning was the foundation for it. In fact, Orion was the only substantial compositional contribution by Cliff to the album. The other two were a riff in Master of Puppets and an intro, Damage Incorporated. So why did Cliff have so little for the album? My theory is that Master of Puppets was a transitional period in Cliff Burton's creativity, sort of calm before the storm. He was exploring new horizons in music. Initially, those melodies did not fit Metallica sound, but the guys liked it, even though Cliff was just um, jamming weird stuff. He could accumulate more riffs for the next album, for the storm, which was not destined to happen though. All right, back to Ride the Lightning. And by the way, I asked you on Instagram, Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets? And I received several hundred comments, and to my surprise, most of them were uh, on the side of Ride the Lightning. So thank you all for your comments, I try to read every comment and push the heart on each. And I have also launched my Telegram channel, where I'm going to post my videos early and share some exclusive stuff. So yeah, join our Insta gang and Telegang friends. For whom the bell tolls? The origins of the song go to the time long before Metallica was born, when Cliff played with Agents of Misfortune. And so the riff waited many, many years to appear on the second Metallica album. Why not the first? Cliff was just a few months in Metallica and the entire album was done by that time. And Anesthesia was just a way to say welcome to the band and do whatever you want, just stay here. Fade to Black and Creeping Death. Both guitar harmonies at the end of the songs belong to Cliff. He probably composed them while working on the album, not before. Within the context of the guitar riffs that James and Kirk provided. Fight Fire with Fire intro too belongs to Cliff and to an unknown dude from 17th century. And it's quite possible that he wrote the harmonized section from the Call of Tulu. Well, the main riff is Mustaine's. The kick-ass bridge sounds more like a James. And so the only part Cliff could be credited for is the harmonized bridge. He actually is credited for the leading bass on Cthulhu, but those parts were laid on top of Mustaine's riffs, and so it uh, should have been considered an arrangement. And Metallica traditionally do not share royalties for arrangements, even if it's a solo which sells the whole song, like in the case of Ride the Lightning. 
The album is so unique because it's like an alloy of riffs by musicians, by all the musicians who shaped the early Metallica, including Dave Mustaine. And due to that, I view the title track as the ultimate Metallica song. It is confirmed that Mustaine wrote the slide the riff. I did that uh, in a couple songs from my previous band. And the Spider Chord 1 2. Which, by the way, was played on the album without that finger breaking technique. Plus the bridge! Sounds suspiciously similar to Take No Prisoners. What about James? He could write the chorus and the sort of breakdown. And the intro is credited for both Lars, according to Dave, and Cliff. So based on that, Lars came up with the melody and Cliff played the harmony, just those a couple notes. Which might seem too small to be credited as a co-writer. But would the song be as catchy without that <laughs> Jeff in the very beginning? And the only guy left aside from the credits was Kirk, which is a bummer. His solo is the most badass part of Ride the Lightning. Remember that Kirk was just 22 at the time, and he composed something that was... <laughs> in 1984, Metallica were young and uncouth, but they had already become pretty competent at their craft. Such a mix of being experienced enough to do quality music while remaining raw is what I call a green mastery. And this is why first albums are often the best. In the case of Metallica, Kill Em All was pure rawness. Ride the Lightning was such a sweet spot, which extended onto Master of Puppets, but a bit faded. Justice for All was made by young yet hardened musicians. On the Black Album they decisively moved towards maturity. And Load and Reload is when Concrete dried out completely. Metallica now were super professionals with over a decade of experience of touring, practicing and studio sessions. And yet Ride the Lightning remains this sweet spot of youth and mastery. While everyone else usually did uh, instrumentals like intros or small parts, thinking that people would not listen to, to long instrumentals. But Metallica did a 9-minute instrumental. Don't forget that Metallica were the first Thrashers who did a ballad, plus Fight Fire with Fire, which was the fastest song at the time that made sense. So they pushed their limits, pushed their abilities, even though they were just young suckers. As they say, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. And we could judge how good or bad an album is by its weakest song. In the case of Ride the Lightning, it's usually Escape or Trapped on the Rise. And I could stop at this point since you know how badass those actually are. There are a few things that will never forgive Metallica, including not playing Trapped on the Rise in f***ing Antarctica. Escape has met the stage only once, simply because Metallica could not avoid it, playing the entire Ride the Lightning live back in 2012. And they were a bit uncertain if it's gonna work out. So do you know what song is next? God, don't say it. Don't say it out loud, please. The song that we never wanted to play live ever. But indeed, Escape proved to be a worthy live track. But Metallica seemed to not have changed their mind about it. And Escape is in my top 3 Metallica breakdowns uh, with uh, Creepy Death and Am I Savage. And by the way, this is the slowest section on Metallica albums with Cliff. Yeah, James says that this is his favorite album, but at the same time, this is one of his least favorite, tone-wise. He criticized Ride Lightning for its sound, especially for the reverb, for the overuse of reverb. But as a bassist and a fan of Cliff Burton, Wright, Hardward and yeah, Justice are my three favorite Metallica albums in terms of bass sound. On Kill Him All, it sounded like Cliff didn't change strings for ages. On Master, it's cool, but it's... 
while on the Rider Lightning is crispy, crunchy, fatty, meaty and everything in between. Alright, those were my points. What are yours? Maybe you think that Red Lightning sucks? Join our discussion in the comments. And yeah, if you want Metallic Geek to keep going, support my Patreon. Thanks for listening and watching. It's Andriy Vasilenko. Be in metal. <gasps>